Remain standing with me, please. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. Oh Jesus. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. Verse number six. One verse of scripture. First Peter chapter three. One verse of scripture. Verse number six. The word of the Lord reads, As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are her children. If you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Somebody will say amen to the reading of God's word. Today we are in part four of our Kingdom Men Rising series. Today I'm going to minister, I'm going to teach, I'm going to preach with this thought in our hearts and in our minds. Simply help a brother out. Help a brother out. I say that prophetically. <laughs> help a brother out. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. God, we even thank you for this, this bit of uh, resistance that I feel in the spirit. Because that just simply reinforces and reminds me, God, that I have exactly what you desire for me to have. And God, I pray, God, that you will ready our hearts and ready our minds. God, I pray, God, that you'll give us hungry hearts and hungry minds. We might be able to receive everything that you desire to say to us. Rid us of every distraction and every hindrance and any and everything that looks to block and to stop your word from having a free course. We pray, God, that we'll get locked and loaded, God, and we will just simply receive the word of God just as it is. It's your word. It's able to equip us and empower us and encourage us. And God, just to simply to be the people that you called us to be. We thank you in advance because we know you're going to speak to us in Jesus' matchless name. Somebody who love them all to say amen. 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 Come on, claim your seat. In the presence of the almighty God. Help. Help a brother. Help a brother out. Well, it was this past Wednesday that the world witnessed a very scary moment, to say the least. It was World Championships for Synchronized Swimming. And it was Miss Anita Alvarez who fainted and lost consciousness and began to sink to the bottom of the pool. Um, Alvarez, who was supposed to be returning to the top of the pool to get some air, as you see there pictured, uh, she was lying there with her knees touching the tiles. Her arms are limp and her eyes are closed. And, and later we'll learn she wasn't even breathing. Uh, she was unconscious at the bottom of the pool, but it was her coach by the name of Miss Andrea uh, Frontez, Frontez um, who is Alvarez's coach. She noticed that uh, the swimmer's feet uh, were more pale than they had ever been. Uh, she saw her sinking instead of coming up for some oxygen, uh, which that set her on high alert. So she then reacted with her cat-like reflexes and jumped in to save the athlete. And then the, the athlete who was lying there, uh, just simply limp and lifeless and helpless, she was rescued from certain death. Uh, it, it, it's a phenomenal picture, I believe, on what it is that God is trying to do and what God is trying to say to us even as the body of Christ. Uh, because I, I, I thought about something as I... As I saw this, this picture of this, this swimmer who was there doing what it is that she does. And she's there and she, she, she's simply uh, trying to compete and trying to do accomplish her goals. Simply something happened that caused her to faint. Something caused her, that caused her to get to the place where she kind of lost herself. And, and I don't know about you, but, but sometimes life has a way of causing you to faint. Life has a way of getting us to the place to where we feel as if. We, we can do a thing. And here Alvarez, as she was being interviewed after the fact, she, she said that, you know, as athletes, we have, a, we have a tendency to push ourselves. We have a tendency to kind of do some things. We have a tendency to kind of take our bodies to the limits. And, and it kind of got me to thinking how many of us in the body of Christ are, are, are sitting there safely on the sidelines and safely on the, on the, on the deck of the pool. And, and we see our, our brothers and our sisters and we see individuals that we know and we love. We see individuals that, that we know 
where they are and we know what they're doing, but yet and still they are drowning. They're, they're drowning. And oftentimes because I am caught up in my own life and I'm caught up in how I think things ought to be and I'm caught up in what it is that's going on in my role and what's going on in my own life, I oftentimes don't even notice that there are people that are drowning all around me. What, what, what if that coach would have been just so caught up in coaching? What, what if that coach was just so caught up in the next swimmer or the next routine? But no, she was able to walk and chew gum at the same time. She was able to still coach and still be able to get to the place where she needed to be able to assist her swimmer. And then that caused me to think, how many people are drowning? How, how many people are drowning mentally? How many people are drowning emotionally? How many people are drowning in shame? And how many people are drowning in grief? And how many people are drowning in their own in their own pride? Drowning and won't even won't even uh, won't even ask for assistance. Drowning and not even don't even know how to ask for help. Drowning and get to the place to where because I'm overwhelmed and because this is too much for me, I don't even know what to do next. And here we're lifeless and we're just simply we're simply drowning. The thing that tripped me out about this story is is Miss Miss Alvarez. She's not a rookie. She she's not a rookie. Here she is a four time Olympic medalist. She's won four Olympic medals. It'd be one thing for me to be out there swimming and I could just swim just enough to try to get to the other side of the pool. I could swim just enough to be able to act like I'm faking with my babies. Like I know how to swim. I can swim just enough. I'm just I'm just a rookie out there when it comes down to swimming. But this is this is someone that is a professional. This is someone that's been there before. She's competed on the highest level and she's done what she needs to do and yet and still she can get to the place to where she can drown. She can get to the place to where something can happen to get her to the place to where she's not able to pull herself out. And of course, my mind went to our men because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm teaching, I'm ministering about men, about kingdom men rising. And men oftentimes, like Miss Alvarez, who is a four-time Olympic medal winner, she's expected to perform. She's expected to win. She's expected to be able to go out there and do what she needs to do. And how many men are just out there just because we're expected to conquer and we're expected to work and we're expected to bring home the bacon and we're expected to be able to be faithful. We're expected to be able to stand against all odds. How many of our men, how many of our men are drowning? And here I love what a coach said in the interview. She said the lifeguards were not doing anything. The lifeguards were just standing around and she said because they was not doing anything she said I jumped in and here can I tell you that's what that's what Pastor Kobe is trying to do and that's why it's so important for you to be connected to a family of believers because here it's not for us just to sit around and talk about who's drowning and talking about who's not performing and talking about who's not surviving and talking about who needs assistance but it's our responsibility to jump in and to be able to help somebody else and this is why this series is about just simply being being able to help a brother out. Can I, can I tell you this is what God is trying to do? God is trying to help us. God is trying to assist us. God is trying to lift us out of the thing that maybe has us drowning. You do know this is our year of elevation and that's what God desires. God desires to pull us out of some things. He desires to lift us out of some things. Some things that maybe you have come in today and you're overwhelmed. Maybe you come in today, you got financial stress. Maybe, maybe you got a, something going on in your body you don't understand. Maybe there's tension in your home. Maybe there's stress on the job but can I tell you that God has sent me here today to be able to give you a word to remind you of his faithfulness and to remind you of his promises and to remind you that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ever ask or think and he desires to dive in not just to sit there and to see you drowning but no he desires to help you and to lift you up somebody say Lord lift me up Lord lift me I need you to lift me up and this is what this series is designed to do is to be able to lift up not just our brothers but to lift up anybody that has a spiritual ear and come on it's really blaring and and it's really it's really parading your immaturity because this series is about men for you to clock out ladies come on no you don't clock out but you ought to clock in you ought to lean in when you are desiring to be married or you are married or you got sons or you just simply desire to be used of God because here you're going to be around individuals and around men every day and this word can be applied whether you're male or female if you can fog a mirror God 
desires to lift you up and God desires to help you to be everything that he's called you to be. So why? Why am I taking my time and I'm doing this? I've told you before, but I'm going to tell you again. I want to encourage our men to allow God to stretch them. Come on, this is our year that we're allowing God to stretch us to where I know it's uncomfortable, but he wants to stretch you. I, I know that you never done it before. I know you've never been there before, but God want to stretch you out of your comfort and out of your norm and out of your going through the motion and God desires to stretch you because when he stretched me, he's literally being able to increase my capacity. When I allow God to stretch me, he can trust me with a little with a little bit more. God, God is desiring to stretch me. Somebody say, stretch me, Lord. Stretch, stretch me, Lord. God, I also want to encourage our men to be stabilized in the things of God. To be stable, to be stable, to be consistent in the things of God. Not to be up and down and in and out and, 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 and here and there and all over the place. To be consistent, to be stable in the things of God. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, oh, your labor not be in vain. And the third thing, I, I want to encourage our men to be saturated in the word of God. The word of God and, and biblical worship is so important for the men of God to get saturated in the word of God and get saturated in worship so what is pastor saying because these are our big three things for the entire ministry this year so 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 here at the beginning of the year oftentimes we'll focus on a couple of things we we'll, one, one year we focus on men marriages and millennials and this this year we focus on being saturated being stretched and we're we're being to the place where we we want to be we want to be saturated in worship so this is our big three things for the entire ministry but if the men get a hold of this if our men get a hold of what it is that we're supposed to be doing as men of God as what we're supposed to be doing as the body of Christ can I tell you that we'll, we'll, we'll catch everybody else everybody else will catch on when the men catch on everybody else will catch on when the men catch on I said everybody else will catch on when the men catch on come on when the husbands get together come on my house is turning around when my house turns around my neighborhood turns around when my neighborhood turns around my community turns around when my community turns around my my city turns around when my city turns around oh my state turns around when my state turns around the United States turns around when the United States turns around oh these will be they that turn the world upside down and can I tell you when the men when the men when the men get together I know I'm born you already I know you already <laughs> but can I tell you that God desires to help you God desires to stretch you God desires to stabilize you God wants you to be saturated in the word of God the saturation in the word is not for the sisters the saturation of the word of God is not for the preachers, not for those who want to minister the word of God. But all of us need to be bathing in the word of God and all of us need to be worshipers. What will happen? Lord, have mercy to our sons and our daughters when the men of God begin to worship him for real. What will happen whenever it is? I, I said this a couple of weeks ago uh, because when we do morning prayer, sometimes I come up here to the church and sometimes I stay home. We do morning prayer every Wednesday, every Wednesday from 6 to when the Lord turn me loose. I don't got a time. That's why we got that conference conference. I can't hear you getting on and getting off because some of y'all be ding, 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 ding. 6.30, y'all ding, getting off. Uh, so I, sometimes I go to 6.40, 6.50, 7 o'clock, 7 o'clock. I go to have a long, I, when he turned me loose, then I turn loose. But here I said, somebody asked me, say, you be praying, you be praying like you be at the church, you be praying like there's no regard. And I said, you know, I, I don't want to wake my family up. So let most time later see he's already up, but I want to wake my family up. But I would rather them hearing their daddy praying than hearing their daddy fussing and cussing. I want to have memories of their daddy calling on the name of the Lord and not calling their mama out their name. Is anybody going to help me with that? Come on. What would happen when the father stand up and we begin to pray? Instead of fussing, we'll say, come on, father, in the name of Jesus. What would happen when the men would get to the place where instead of we going to try to throw some bowls, we'll go and we'll say, let's put some prayer on it. We'll say, baby, I don't know. We got laid off. Baby, I don't know. You got the bad report. Baby, I don't know. What would happen when the men begin to call on the name of Lord? I tell you what will happen. God will get some glory. I tell you what happened. We'll steal the Avenger. I tell you what happened. We'll stop the enemy right in his tracks. When, when, when the men of God stand up and do what it is that God has called us to do, trying to do the best they can. That's why we began this series. We talked about all eyes on me. Because as the man of God goes, as the father goes, as the husband goes, so does the entire house. And my children are watching me. And my spouse is watching me. And for some of us, my spouse is waiting on me. My, my spouse is waiting on me to be able to show up. Beginning to, they, they want me to share. Want to, want to see me serve. And want to see me be a student. Want to see me soar. And then we said... Uh, 
uh, the week prior, week, week after that rather, we talked about it's time for me to start acting up. Time for me to start acting up. And here, I love what Paul says. He said, be watchful as a man. Be, be Stand firm in the faith. He said, act like men and be strong. It's time for me to start acting up. I've shown my rumple still skin too long. And now it's time for me to start acting up because I'm a mature individual because I know too much about them. You can't, you can't make me down. It's time for me to start acting, acting up. And because I'm going to act up, I'm going to rise up and build. This is what we talked about on last week. Rising up and building because I'm, I'm, a, I'm up for the task because I'm going to say yes to God because I'm not going to be ducking and dodging. I'm not going to be sometime. I won't be flaky. I won't be up and down and in and out. But no, it's time for me to rise up and build. And can I tell you that the, that thing that you're desiring and that thing that you're longing for, looking for is right there. But God is waiting on you to rise up and build. He's not going to do it for you. He's not going to fix your marriage for you. He's not going to fix your finances for you. He's not going to do all these things that you're looking for. not going to do it for you. But you got to rise up. You got to rise up and you got to be able got to be able to build. And that's why I love this letter from the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul who wrote the letter that we talked about last week. But I love this letter written by the Apostle Peter. Peter, Peter who, who is picking up his pen. He's divinely inspired through the inspiration of the word of God. And he is, he is writing to these saints in Asia Minor. Listen to me closely. Here's my message. He's writing to these individuals and they're in the midst of suffering. And this is where all of us get in at. You know, I know all of my buildup was about the men and all of that, but it's where all of us get in. Peter gives the people of God a word in the midst of persecution. P P Peter preaches a pericope in persecution. Come on, it's a lot of peas right there. Peter picked pig on a pig right there. Uh, 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 yeah, you see, you seen that. Then I came all the way around. I said, hey, I can put some peas right there. Let me go back and say that. Yeah, Peter was preaching to them in the midst of persecution and pain and pathos. Come on here. And here, and here he says, Don't be no pansy, but I need you to be able to pay attention to be able to get the word of the Lord. Peter is preaching. Stop. Peter is preaching the where he wants to get them to a place the way he wants them to receive the word of God. In the midst of their suffering, here's a, here's a man that's a man on the mission. Here, here's a man. Here it is. Watch me closely. Here's a man that's preaching to individuals that are drowning. They're seemingly drowning. They're seemingly are being destroyed by the waves of persecution. They're seemingly being destroyed by the waves of opposition. They're seemingly being being overcome and overwhelmed by the waves of their culture. Come on, we've talked about this before. That where Peter was writing to in the vision that first century, where it was not popular to be a Christian. There's a brother by the name of Pharaoh, uh, name of, 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 of Emperor, by the name of Nero, rather. Emperor by the name of Nero, who hated Christians. He did all that he can to try to extinguish Christians. And here, it was Peter that was writing to them in the midst of their persecution, in the midst of their suffering, in the midst of their pain. He gave them a word. And what is Pastor trying to tell you today? That right in the midst of what you're suffering, right in the midst of what you're going through right now, right in the midst of what you're experiencing, God has a word for you. For every trouble, God has a word. For every trial, God has a word. For everything that keeps you up in the middle of the night, God has a word. For every disappointment, for every letdown, for every setback, God has a word. But you got to be able to sit up and got to be able to receive what God desires to say. Peter, here's some 21 times in his short letter. He mentioned suffering and he talked about the people suffering. He reminded them about Jesus Christ suffering and he tells them that here, can I, can I tell you people of God? He reminds them that sometimes suffering brings the worst out of us. Sometimes suffering, sometimes uh, opposition, sometimes sometimes heartache and pain brings the worst out of us. Sometimes we really we really forget about what it is that we're supposed to be doing. Sometimes we forget about the fact that God has given us a mandate or given us a mission because we're going through. But my mission, my assignment does not stop because I got opposition. My assignment does not stop because I'm going through. But no, I'm supposed to be able to go through to get to what God has for me. I don't think y'all ready for me today but I came for y'all because God has a word for you and Peter he's writing this word to them and he's trying to remind them he's writing with a sense of urgency why is he writing with a sense of urgency watch me closely because the culture is trying to extinguish the light of Christ 
He, he's writing with a sense of urgency because the culture is trying to snuff out everything that God is trying to do. This is why I love the word of God because the word of God is so applicable. It's so, it's so appropriate. It's so applicable for where we are. The word of God is not something that's old and antiquated and outdated. But just as Peter was writing to these individuals that the, that the world was trying to snuff them out, you and I, we're living in some days and some times where the world is trying to snuff us out as well. Our culture, somebody say culture. Oh, that's so sorry. Somebody say culture. <laughs> culture is simply, it's, it's, how, it's the results of how humans handle and see life. Our culture is just simply how humans handle and, and see life. That's our culture. That's kind of what we do. It's what we make of the world. It's what we make of situations. That's our culture. This is how we do it in the hood. This is how we do it in the south. This is how we do it up north. This is how we do it in the Nesbitt home. This is how we do it in the Johnson home. This is how we do it in the, in the, in the Williams home. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. This is how, it's the way we interact with life. And if you're not careful, my friend, you will allow your culture to cripple who it is that God desires for you to be. If, if, you, if you're not careful, because, because we are the people of God. We're the people of God. Let me see your hand if you're a child of God. Let me see your hand if you're a child of God. You're a child of God. So that, that's most of our hands. And some of us raising our hand by faith. And that's fine. I want you to raise your hand by faith. You know, <laughs> I, want, I want to do that. So, so we don't allow the culture to dictate to us. Listen to me closely. We dictate to the culture. And Peter is writing to some individuals that's drowning. Why? Because he wants to help them out. He wants to help them out. What brings you out of your struggle? What brings you out when, when culture and, and your world all around you are trying to kill you? The, it's, it's the word of God. And Peter, I love this, he reminds them of who, of who they are. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It's on the screen. I need the Bible to teach y'all. Y'all okay with that, right? I need the Bible. 1 Peter 2, 9 says, look what he reminds them when, 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 when things get tough, when things get dark. He reminds them who they are. He said, but you are not like that. You're not like the world. You're not fickle. You're not up and down. You're not, you're not sometime. And no, you're not like that he said for you are a chosen people can I tell you that God picked you God chose you before you was ever a twinkle in your father's eye God chose you and picked you and you are chosen people you are royal priest you are a holy nation you're God's own very possession you belong to God and God should belong to you and he's reminding the people of who they are can I tell you if you if you would know who you were if you would know what God has done for you if you would know what God has said concerning you can I tell you most of the things Things that are defeating you and most of the things that you discourage over you will not be discouraged because you remember all oh, that my father is a king of kings and the lord of lords he's reminding the people of who who they are he said he said you you are god's chosen people he said as a result because of this because of this look what he says you can show others the goodness of god can i tell you that's why you're not in heaven right now you're not in heaven right now because you, God has left you in the earth so you can show the goodness of God. Come on here. You're not left in the earth so you can get paid and platformed and positioned. No, you're left in the earth so you can be able to say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, you're in the earth so you can be able to tell your kids and your grandkids, the Lord has helped us. The Lord got you with that tablet. The Lord got you with them Jordan. The Lord got us living like this, driving like this, eating like this. It's the Lord. It's the Lord had not been. So you, you are here to showcase the glory of God. Look what he said. He called us. He's reminding them of who they are. He's called, he's called you out of darkness into the wonder, the wonder of light. So, so here, come on, people of God. Come on, I need y'all to think with me today. This is going to be one of those kind of messages. It's going to be very informative. going to be very instructional. And I pray that the information and the instruction that you get will turn into inspiration. I need y'all to lean with me because I'm trying to equip you uh, with, with, uh, with this onslaught that's going on in our society. So Peter is telling the people of God. He's saying, you know what? You're not better, you're just chosen. He, he said, you're not better, you're just a, you're just a royal priesthood. You're not better, you're just a holy nation. You're not better, you're just God's possession. You're not better, but you're supposed to showcase God's glory. In other words, I can't act like everybody else. Because I'm a part of the family of God. And here, this is why I love the word of God. It's so relevant. And this is what God is saying to us all. To be able to kind of check ourselves. To see kind of where we are. And if we're not careful, we'll allow ourselves to stay stuck. And to be stale where we are. And we'll allow everything around us to, to dictate and to project. And to cause my destiny to come to pass. Because of everything that's going on around me. But when the Bible talks about individuals that are following God. And individuals 
individuals who are not following God, it puts them in three different categories. I gave you this a couple of weeks ago, but it bears repeating. This, first of all, it's a natural man. The natural man are, are the individuals who don't know God. The natural man, the individual that are here who are not saved. I know everybody raised their hand and said they're a child of God, but I've been doing this long enough to know that everybody in here is not saved. Come on, I know everybody in here uh, don't, don't know the Lord. Some, and the, the tragedy is some of us think we are, and we're really not. Come on, the tragedy is that some of us think that we have put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and who better to hear it from than somebody that love you? Come on, uh, there was somebody that can help you and assist you. The natural man is the individual who does not know the Lord Jesus Christ. They, they, they're not saved. They're unregenerate. These individuals, they have no biblical knowledge and they are, they are attached to the world and attached to the things of this world. But then the most dangerous creature on this planet is the carnal, worldly Christian. The most dangerous person on this planet is the carnal, worldly Christian. The natural man, the person who's not saved. They, all, all they know is to do what they do. Come on, I, I didn't have a miserable life of sin. I was going to hell and I was enjoying the trip. I did what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. But then there's individuals who who gotten close enough to the things of God, but not have not have allowed the word of God, the things of God to transform them. These are individuals that are close and they, 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 they operate in ministry. They, they teach, they preach, they sing, they serve, they do all this. But they have not allowed the word of God to transform them. They're more attracted to the world. Love and hip hop soothes them more than the word of God. Or the hookah soothes them more than the word of God. Their drink soothes them more than the word of God. Pretty Ricky soothes them more than the word of God. Bumquisha also soothes them more than the word of God. Oh, mimosa. Oh, soothe them a little bit. I'm going to get come on, look at somebody. Say, you're going to get to your stuff in a second. You're going to get to your stuff in a second. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what soothes you, but there, there's in the music that say, yes, Lord. And there's another person say, yes, give me another round. Come on here. What, what, what them saints say? They can say, yeah, yes, Lord, I, I give myself away. Don't give my stuff away. What's wrong with you? Come on. What, what them folks at right there? Withholding nothing. I'm holding on to this. Come on here. What, what, what them saints say? That's a, da that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous creature. Because you're just close enough to the things of God. You know just enough about the word of God. You know just enough about the things of God the way you think you are right with God. When, when did you get saved? I've been in church all my life. My mama was a missionary. My granddaddy built the church. And my mama used to sell sweet potato pies. And, and my, my grandma made the, the little handkerchiefs for the pastor and all that kind of stuff. When did you get saved? <laughs> You've been around the things of God. But the things of God are not on the inside. That's a dangerous individual. That's a dangerous individual. But then the other, the other group is a disciple. Somebody said disciple. The disi a disciple is one oh, that's pursuing Jesus Christ. That's what God has called all of us to be. Somebody that's chasing after him and going after him. And in this world, that's, what, that's what's going on in this world, in this society. We got a bunch of individuals that know about the things of God. Can recite the things of God, but I have not allowed the word of God to discipline me. I've not allowed the word of God to, to disciple me, to change me. There should be more of him living than me. And this is why the word of God be able to come to give us in the midst of this hostile world. This is what Peter's doing. In the midst of this hostile culture, Peter's giving the people of God a word so they can know how to live. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Come on, I hope I'm helping you. I said it's going to be informational. It's going to be informative. And I want you to take this information and turn it into inspiration. 1 Peter 3, 15 says, but in your hearts, look at this, honor Christ the Lord as holy. And he'll bless you when he does that. Uh, honor the Lord as holy in your heart. In other words, there's some things I can't do, won't do, and, and just can't make myself do because I have a place in my heart to where he's holy. There, there, there ought to be something about you when you're a real child of God. If you're just sinning with no conscience... If you're just sexing with no conscience, can I be real with you? If you're just doing what you're doing and you know it's wrong and it never bothers you. <laughs> you might not be. You might not be a child. It might not be a child of God. But, but see, because a, a, because a sheep, a sheep will fall into the mud. When the sheep falls into the mud, it struggles in the mud. 
When a pig or a swine falls in the mud, it doesn't try to get out. It wallows in the mud. And some of us are wallowing in our mess and swimming in our mess and backstroking in our mess. And you know why we're doing it? Because our nature has not been changed. When my nature gets changed from a swine to a sheep, oh, behold, all things become new. When when my nature gets changed, I'm saying I shouldn't be doing it. I shouldn't be saying it. I shouldn't be entertaining it. Oh, I get something on the inside where he convicts me because my nature has been changed anybody here nature has been changed anybody here you don't do the things you used to do you don't go to the place you used to go come on I know they said I looked at my hands they look new my hands still look the same look at my feet they look new they still look the same but it's something about whenever it is I engage in some things I shouldn't be doing in my nature I'm, I'm, I'm really giving you a test Really give me a test to determine whether or not you're a genuine child of God. I told the connection class today that we've we've lifted, we lifted, we've, we've we've listened to this lie and say nobody can judge me. That's a lie. I can be a fruit inspector. There's some things about your life that I can determine. Oh, no, they love God. I can determine. Oh, no, she in love with God. Oh, I can determine. No, he loved God. And I can see some things about your life and say they don't know God. Oh, they say, who are you to judge? You don't got a heaven to take nobody to and hell you. You're exactly right. But the word of God said, you know the tree by the fruit that it bears. There's some things that I can look about, look at you, and I can tell whether or not you're a child of God. So Peter says, oh, I didn't finish. I'm sorry. He says, honor the Lord in, in your heart as holy. Look at this. As being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you. Look at this. For a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect this is what peter said peter is saying in this hostile culture that this church is in let me arm you with some answers let me give you the word of god so the culture won't crush you let me give you the word of god so whenever somebody asks you why in the world you take your only real day off and go to some church to listen to some man let me give you some answers when somebody say you take your hard on money you're already broke you take your hard on money then you hear that man say they got almost seventy thousand dollars why are you gonna take your twenty dollars <laughs> let me give you some answers so you can be able to speak to what you need to speak to and know what you need to know because in fact what we should have is a biblical worldview yeah. come on somebody say biblical worldview What's a biblical worldview? A biblical worldview is I view the world through the lens of the Bible. A biblical worldview is that when I, every, I see everything that's going on, but I look at the world through the lenses of the scripture. I, I, look, at the, I, look, I look at what's going on, and I am to, I'm to let the word of God define what I'm seeing. A biblical worldview is I don't see things how I desire to see them and, and, and deduce my answers and things in nature based off of how I think things ought to be. But no, I go back to the scripture. And every child of God, if you don't have a biblical worldview in this day and time, you will be deceived. If you don't have a biblical wor- worldview in this time, you'll be believing this and believing that. And you'll get to the point and say, I don't know what to believe. But whenever did you stay close to the word of God and the things of God, you'll be able to understand. You'll be able to understand. You really can drop this thing into three buckets. Come on, this is information. Drop it in three buckets. Creation. Somebody say creation. Cre- creation is, that's, that's the starting point when it comes down to biblical worldview. Creation. Creation is just simply God is the author of life. The creator of all things. He, he, he chooses cho- cho- choose anything. Uh, look at this. God put in this world and you can be certain that it's fundamentally good. Because God created it. So, so what, what are you saying, Pastor? This is so simple. When I understand the creation according to the word of God, and I don't believe in the Big Bang, and I don't believe in, 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 the, in the, what is the one, what is the evolution? I don't believe in that, but I believe that there's a creator. I believe that there's, that, that, that there's somebody up there, someone intelligent, design. When I believe in the creator, I understand that there's someone that's absolutely, positively in control of this earth. He's in control of this world, and he initiated everything. I got to understand creation. God is the one set all this in order. Then I got to understand fall. Somebody say fall. fall. Not, not, not summer, winter, spring, fall. No, the, the, fall, the, fall, the fall of man, which, which tarnished everything that God created. It tarnished it in some way. When Adam sinned, we all sinned. Want to know what's going on in this world? Why there's so much violence? Why there's so much, so much murder? Why there's so much rape? Why so much killing? Why all that? Because, because we're living in a fallen world. In a fallen world that all we know is sin. All we know is to do whatever it is that we do. We, we live in a fallen world and we have an enemy in this fallen world. And then you look at this through, through your biblical worldview. You have creation. What's the second one I told you? Fall. And then the last one is redemption. 
Redemption is, is that it, no matter what has been tarnished, oh, this is, this is good news for somebody, but only two people going to get it. No matter what has fallen, it can be restored to its original purpose by Christ, the rightful ruler of this planet. No matter what has fallen, I'm trying to help you how to view the world. This is how you view the world, that where man, things are bad, but I know that God have created this, and things are bad because we know we live in a fallen world. Man, but getting still, no matter how bad it is, and no matter what's going on, when I give myself to him, he's able to restore. He's able to make things new. He's, a, he's able to help me. That's all, that's, all I'm trying, that's all I'm trying to tell you. Now, let me... And let me, let, me, let me tell you something, because I've been setting you up, and I've been trying to, trying to position you the way you can be able to hear what it is that Pastor Kobe is saying today. And I, and I said Pastor Kobe, because I need to be a pastor for a moment, because as much as going on in our world, and what I'm about to say right now, I know for a fact that people that I love, I'm getting ready to offend. I, I, know, I know that. People that I love, I'm getting ready to offend. People that I love dearly, I'm getting ready to offend. And, 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 and some of those individuals I'm getting ready to offend, it's okay because they don't know no better. They don't know. They're not children of God. They're not saved. All they know is the world. Remember I told you about the carnal man, the natural man, all that? They, they don't know no better. But then there's some folk I'm getting ready to fear who supposedly are believers and supposedly are Christians. And, and the problem is well, I'm getting ready to fear because they're more worldly than they are biblical. I'm going to get rid of fans, some folk, because you, you understand that there's something else. If we're talking about the creation, we're talking about uh, the fall, we're talking about redemption, there's something else that's a hot button issue right now, day and time. It's called the sanctity of life. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the sanctity of life is just, just simply that God is the author of all life. Yeah. You, you know, unless you've been living on the rock, you know about this Roe versus Wade was, was overturned. If, if you've been living under a rock, you, you will know that, 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 that here, this Supreme Court overturned this thing that was put in place back in 1973. And here, a decision uh, from 6 to 3 was passed on this past Friday, June the 24th. And here, it has eliminated, listen to me closely, the constitutional protection of abortion. This decision allows or restricts. Or bans abortions, and now that falls in, in, in whichever states that are that are that are that are that are going, they, they've left it up. They have left it up to the states to be able to decide. And now we've got some some believe it's going to be up to about half of the country eventually is going to get to the place that where they're going to they're going to say that abortion is illegal. I, I don't know about you, but here, if, you, if you've been on social media, if you've been listening to news, if you've been, if you've been listening to this, and this is important. Come on, people of God. This is important for you to know where we stand as the people of God. So you just don't be sharing stuff and you just don't be integrating stuff just because, just because you, you sympathize with people. Just because you hear what they're going. I know I'm getting ready to offend you and I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings because we have, we have our strong opinion. But what do you do when your strong opinion has a head-on collision with the word of God? What do you do with what you feel and what you think and even what you've experienced as an individual? Has a head-on collision with the word of God. Just because I participated in something does not nullify the word of God. Just because I have an affinity for something or a soft spot for a group of people does not mean that, that the word of God is put null and void. According to the World Health Organization, oh, about 73, 73 million uh, inter, uh, induced abortions take place every year. I said 73 million abortions take place every year, accounting for 29% of pregnancies. People choose to terminate their pregnancies for a variety of reasons. Listen to me closely. It's not the time to check your emails right now. It's time for you to listen to what it is your pastor is trying to tell you so you'll be able to know how to respond and know how to, ha and how to make sure your heart is in the right posture. Because here, some people abort their children based upon uh, health reasons or preservation of life, meaning that, that it's, it's a determination that this mother's going to live or this child is going to live. So, sometimes sometimes they, they, they abort their child because of incest or maybe it's going to be some type of genetic disorder. Uh, some, some choose abortion because they, 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 were, they were forced to because they feel as if that, that they, they, can't, they can't nurture, they can't care for. Sometimes it's rape. It gets real deep, y'all. It's, it's, it's not just one thing or one side or one particular way. I'm just going, oh, it's this. No, it's, it's got to look a little deeper. Sometimes it's rape or incest and having a baby and being able to take care of a child and being able to raise a child and someone raped you and somebody impregnated you, that is a major decision. Some simply just don't feel like they're prepared for the responsibility of parenting. 
Some don't have the support or the system to be able to raise a child. Some, some, some feel that they, they, they only got pregnant because their birth control failed. They, they, they feel as if they just don't want no kids. They're not ready for no kids. Uh, some feel like they don't have, they're not financially ready for any children. Some, some were sexually attacked and assaulted once again. But yet and still, what do we need to do as a people who got all those things according to how we feel? Uh, may, we may think those are legitimate reasons to abort a child. But what do I do? When my legitimate reason has a head-on collision with the word of God. Oh, come on. I know I'm boring y'all right now. I know, I know I'm boring you, but I want, I want to arm you. And I know this is a hot-button issue, but I, hey, this is what pastors are supposed to do. Instead of just dancing and running and shouting and bucking and all that. Give me something, pastor, that I can, that I can talk to or at the water cooler tomorrow. Give me something, pastor, that with, my, with, with, with this word that you're giving me, I can, I can take it with me on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday. Give me something. Because we're supposed to have... A biblical worldview. Listen to me closely. All life comes from God. This is where we got to start. And this is where we should stop. All life comes from God. If God allows life to be brought forth. God is the one that did it. Help me say a line. God is the one. Regardless of my own circumstances. God is the one that produced life. Y'all are getting real tight and squirmish on me, but that's okay. I felt y'all doing praise and worship. I knew what type of this book I mess this is going to be. But all life comes from God. Look at Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness and let, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the heaven and, and, and over the livestock. And all the, he said, let us make man in my, in, my, in my image. This is what God has initiated life. And God said, let me make man in my image. So any person that comes forth, any person that experiences life has been made in the image of God. This is what theologians call the Imago Dei. Then Mago did just simply we're, we're God's image bearers. Listen to me closely. Y'all, it's not time to go to sleep. Listen to me closely. We're the only thing in the creative order that carry the image of God. We're God's image bearers. Thank God for the ocean. Thank God for the atmosphere, the stratosphere. Thank God for the animal kingdom. Thank God for all those things. But we're the only thing in creative order that bears God's image. That is very important. We're made in the image of God. So if I believe that I'm made in the image of God, and I believe that you've been made in the image of God, shouldn't that tweak the way I, I handle you? Amen. Genesis 2, 7. Not only have we been made in the image of God, Genesis 2, 7. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust, from the dust of the ground. Here it is. And <laughs> breathe in his nostrils the breath of life. Where, where did the breath come from? Was it, was, it, was it the choice of Adam to have the breath? Was it his choice because it was his body? Was it his choice or was it God that breathed on him? It was God that breathed on him. And here he made everyone a living creature. Y'all still, still not with me. Acts 17, 25 said, nor, look at this, is he served by human hands. God doesn't serve by human hands as though he needed anything. God don't need anything from us. God don't ask us our permission before he bring life into the earth. God don't ask us for our vote. God don't ask us for our opinion. But if God allow life to come forth, as the Bible says, he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and what else? Everything. Y'all still not with me. I thought this was a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church. I, I, if I was downtown at the, at the steps of the courthouse, then I, I'll expect this resistance. But here we, this, this is the house of God. I'm trying, I thought it was a, oh, help me here, Ariel. I already gave my gas card away. But help me here. Can I say here that God desires, I appreciate it, that God desires for the people of God to know what we, what we stand for and what we believe. Psalm, Psalm 139, 13 says, for, for you form, look at this, my inward parts. Who did it? God fearfully and wonderfully put me together just the way I am. When, when did he do it? Did he do it when I got here? Did he do it whenever I was born? Did he do it at university hospital? Did he do it at, at Orange Park Medical Center? Did he do it at the house? When, when did God do it? But the Bible tells me that he knitted me together in my mother's womb. God has given us we're his image bearers, and he's knitted together his image in a womb of a mother. Now, who gives that mother, that individual, the right <laughs> to extinguish what God knit together? All right. All right. 
I give myself away. I, I know I'm offended. I'm offended. I'm offending people that I love. I know I am. I'm offending people I love. I'm offending people that that that, that, that yeah, I am. I know I am. Because yeah, I don't live on a rock and I understand. I, I got I got my fingers on the pulse of the culture. I understand where we are. And sometimes we hear things and we see things and we are drawn to a thing and we sympathize with a thing and we do not deduce a thing with the word of God. I'm have a biblical worldview, and it's not about how I feel before I got saved, before I was a Christian. I said, you do whatever you want to do, as long as you don't bother me. I don't care. You can, be, you, can, you can be on the other side of the team. You can abort. You can smoke. You can drink. You can shoot. You can snort. Do whatever you want to do. But that's not a biblical worldview. The Bible says, Jeremiah 1.5, before, before, be, be, even before I was formed in my mother's womb. <laughs> oh, I hear your sideline preacher. He knew me. He knew me. And before uh, I was born, he said, I consecrated you. I set you apart and appointed you for a work and appointed you to do something. Where does the church stand? Where should we be? We're not down anybody we're not mad at anybody this is not a political issue this is a biblical issue it doesn't matter what if there's a red state or blue state it doesn't matter if it's president former president trump president biden it doesn't matter who is signing off and who is saying it's okay the supreme court or no court the people of god ought to be in the house of law saying you know what we 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 we're going we're going we're standing with god mm-hmm but you know, you I don't think I don't think some of us see what's going on in our society. We don't, we'll see. We're gonna be too busy on Facebook. We too busy. We too busy. We don't too, too busy Instagram. And we too busy trying to figure out, trying to trying to build our brand. We too busy trying to do all these things, and we don't see what's going on. The enemy is attacking us. He's assaulting us, and here he's getting us to the place. Not I'm not just arguing over the sanctity of life. Not just arguing that, but he's literally redefining the family, right in front of us. He's redefining the family. Yes, he is. The family, here, one, 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 one word, I've been studying this. One, one article says the family ought, ought to be, we ought to, we ought to rethink how we think about family. This, this, this author says uh, a family should be thought of as a circle of love, including any individuals who were deeply attached to, any, to one another. That's what a family ought to be. And some of us even in our spirit are like, what's so wrong with that? But here, it's, it's, it's the underpinning. It's, the, it's, the, it's what's underneath that. It's what that is insinuating. It's what, it's what that's taking us to. Because here, if we redefine family and we redefine what God says about family, just being able to accept who I love is not just you, my friend, and you, you and I like family. You like my brother. You like my sister. No, it's saying, this is my family. I'm a man, and you a man. You my husband. You my family. You, you a woman. And Oh, y'all are going to help me here. We're, we're seeing the family be... Redefine right before our eyes. I wish, I wish I didn't have a pet rally. I hope I, I wish I had a, a church. I wish I had a people of God that knew who we were and know what we're supposed to do and to be able to hear the word of God in a way that we can actually make, make application here. The Bible tells us something very, very key because I'm not supposed to allow the culture to redefine what God has already defined. I'm supposed to be able to speak to the culture. I'm supposed to be able to speak to the culture. Even, even, even I'm, I'm going to bother. I'm really good. So the one folk, one, one folk that I didn't get mad, I'm going to get you mad right here. I'm trying to get everybody mad. That's my goal today. Get everybody mad. That's what, that's what, that's what I'm trying to do. So, so, so let me let me let me try to let me get let me get the, let me get the rest of you. This is the folk online. Nobody in here. All y'all love me. All y'all love me. But, but the folk online, them heathens on Twitter, I see y'all. Look. <laughs> Take for instance, this is just one group. This is just one group that is trying to redefine family. This is one group. Take, for instance, the group Black Lives Matter. As much as I agree with this statement, I vehemently disagree with the organization. Lord have mercy. I said this in a room full of folk. <laughs> I, I, I agree with, I, I, I agree, I agree Black Lives Matter. And there are some people, and, and some of us are some of us are more black than we're Christian. Some of us are more black than we're Christian. Some, some, of, us, some of us cry when Obama got elected and we cry, oh, it's a great day in nation. But I say nothing about Obama, but I say nothing about my president, but I say and, and even when he did things that go against the word of God, we still just get in line because, because he's a, he's a, he's, a, he's a black president. Some of us are more, uh, so, but I am to be unap- unapologetically whatever it is I am, whatever culture, whatever race, whatever ethnicity I am, I'm going to be unapologetically that, but unashamedly Christian. Come on, somebody. My ethnicity should not trump my Christianity. Shouldn't it? It's Black Lives Matter 
on their website. Not, it's not there anymore. So on all fair, it's not there anymore. But on their website, and I'm giving this before. Look at what they say about, about the family. This is the underpinning. This is what they're trying to do. We, we are committed. So you think it's just about a hashtag. You think it's just about a shirt. And I don't know if none of y'all got that shirt on. I ain't bothering you. I'm just saying. All I know is it's black. I just say blaze. All right. I was like, oh, Lord. They got on black. They're going to say, Pastor, Pastor, type that up when they saw it and send it to the screen. Some of y'all think y'all are so important. And when I see y'all, oh, Brother Terry here. Let me give him this scripture. Let me throw that, t- that scripture back. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's not that. <laughs> We are, you'll be surprised. We, we, we are committed. Think what they said. We are, are y'all paying attention? Y'all just want to shout? Y'all want to just shout? Come y'all strike up, bang. Just want to shout. Just want to shout. All right, okay. We, we are committed to disrupting the Western prescribed, look at this, nuclear family structure. Requirement by supporting each other as extended families and villages that, co- that, that collectively care for one another. It, 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 they simply say, oh, so, oh, so more. Come on, give me their rest because they continue. Thank you. I'm so smart. An- uh, an- another, and especially our children, to the degree that mothers and parents and children are comfortable. You, you missed that through all of the rhetoric and all the words. What, 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 what is it saying? It's saying we want to redefine what family is. We're going to blur the lines on what family is to where if I'm comfortable saying that this is my family, then I'm just going to be comfortable with that. Who says a family has to have a mommy and a daddy? Why can't it have two daddies? Why can't it be two mamas? Why, you don't know we open the door. We open up the door to four mamas there and for five daddies. We open the doors up to where if this is okay, when will we ever stop? Yeah, I'm like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we we just simply we just simply trying to they just simply trying to blur the lines on what on what's going on and we're trying to re, they redefine the, the family they're not the own organization so I'm sorry because we're not we're not anti anyone and you hear pastors speaking these things because this is what you're seeing this is what the this is what the people you're listening to are talking about and you hear me keep speaking to it but what 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 difference does it make you mean to come here and talk about the archaeological archives of the land of Edom and here and you dealing with uh, you and seeing Roe versus Wade all weekend what good is it for me to come here and talk about something that's going to tickle you and don't give you the word of God to be able to arm you and to help you so we're not anti anyone. Oh, no, no, no. We're not over and against any group of people. For all have sinned and called and fallen short of the glory of God. We love everybody. But we got a responsibility, Ephesians 4.15. We got a responsibility rather speaking the truth in love. We got a responsibility, my friend, truthinlove.tv. We got a responsibility to speak the truth in love. We got to have a biblical worldview. And that's what Peter, that's what Peter is saying, 1 Peter 2.12. He said, be careful to live properly among your unbelieving neighbors. Lord, look at that responsibility he's giving people in a corrupt culture, in a culture that's trying to squeeze out the anointing and squeeze out the power and squeeze out the potency of the word of God. Peter said, be careful how you live amongst people who don't believe like you believe. Be careful. Stop co-signing that because somebody feel like it's their right to be able to abort their body, their, their baby, it's their body. No, my friend, it's not your right. And I got to be careful how I live and how I communicate, how I got to be careful. I know I know you maybe you got somebody in your family like I do. Maybe you got somebody in your family or who is who is leaning towards lesbianism or leaning towards homosexuality. That because they lean in that way, that does not lean the word of God that way. You don't sympathize with them because that's your child and sympathize with them because that's your that's your brother or that's your mama or your daddy. The word of God is still the word of God. I gotta be careful what I'm doing when it is that I <laughs> Lord have mercy. I wish y'all. I wish y'all could feel what I feel. Look here, look. He said, be careful. Here, put the verse. Thank you. Y'all so good. Be careful um, how, you, how you are among your unbelieving neighbors. Come on, people of God. What, what are you at work saying is okay with? Okay with? What you okay with? Come on, people of God. Come on. Come on. Chosen generation. Royal priesthood. Holy nation. Come on. I'm blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Come on, above and not never beneath, no weapon form. Come on, what you what, what you say about it? Even when you agree with it in your heart, will you allow yourself to move over to what the word of God say? Will you allow yourself to be aligned with the word of God? 
He says, then even if they accuse you of doing wrong, because they are, that's somebody right now, they're going to be on the internet, they're going to be on YouTube, they're going to be emailing us, oh, you, that's hate crime, that's hate speech, uh, you, who are you, so judgmental, that's why I don't like church people now, they think they all got together, oh, you just heard one part, I said, for all have sin and come short of the glory, and when they accuse us of doing wrong, oh, they will see our honorable behavior, because we're not going to fuss with nobody, we help everybody, we don't say, oh, are you a lesbian, are you gay, or have you done this with we don't do that. We love everybody, but we're going to lift up the word of God. We're not going to water the word of God down for nobody or no thing. They'll give honor to God who judges the world. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love, we love you. We love you. Hear me. You, we love you. But there's some things I had to give up. There's some things I'm giving up. <laughs> and you don't got to give nothing up. You got to go talk to me. Peter. Is giving them a word. Let me hurry. I'm, I'm almost out of time. P Peter, Peter, am I helping anybody so far? Am I helping anybody? <laughs> Peter. Peter's giving them a word in the midst of their trouble. Oh, I wish you'd seen the relevance of this. Peter's giving them a word in the midst of their culture. And this, this word that he's given them is not to placate them. This word that they're giving them is not to pacify them. But this word is to lift them. He wants, he, wants to, he wants to lift them, lift them. He wants to lift them. Look what he says, 1 Peter 3, 1. Here it is. He says, likewise. It is, it's not, I'm, trying, I'm trying to help a brother out. Peter, Peter says, likewise. You're going to see it in a second. You're going to see it in a second. He said, like, like, like what, Peter? Because you just can't park at 1 Peter 3, 1. No good Bible students know you got to read the chapter before and the chapter after. You, you know, just can't, likewise what, Peter? So glad you asked. He said, just like in 1 Peter 2, 13. For the Lord's sake, he said, submit to all human authority. Whether the kings or the head of states, First Peter two eighteen says, "Servants, be subject to your masters with all re with all respect, not only to the good and the gentle, but also the unjust." So here he said, he said, just like we're supposed to submit to our governors and our people who are in power, presidents all the way down in our context, just like we're supposed to submit and be subject on the job. No matter who our boss, whether our boss is nice, warm, and fuzzy, or we work for Hitler, it doesn't matter. He says we ought to, we ought to, we ought to submit. He goes on in 1 Peter 3, 7. He says, likewise, uh-oh, yeah. husband. So, so Peter has three groups he's talking, to. he's talking to. He's talking to those of us dealing with government. All of us deal with government. All of us who are employees or maybe we're employers. Here, he says, we all got to deal with one another a particular way. And then he brings it down to our homes and says, like. Why? Like just, just like that. Somebody say, just like that. Yeah. Just like that. I, I'm, I'm called to live a particular way. What, what does God, God has done. This, this, is, this is what pastor's talking about. Pa pastor's saying that I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. Because here, that, that, there's something that you and I can do. Particular to all of our married sisters. And, and all of our sisters who desire to be married. And all of our sisters who desire to one day put a ring on. One day walk the aisle. One day do all that. Come on. We, we, there's something that we can do. There's something that we can do to help a brother out. That, there's something here. You, your, your husband, your, your, your son, uh, your, your friend, your, your brother. Uh, not, not where it is that, that, that you desire, that you know God want to be. That there's something that you and I can do. And that's, that one thing is simple. The one thing is simple is for you and I to get in order. You missed it. Because we put everything on the person we tried to change. And sometimes God put us in peculiar situations. He says, when you change, I'll change them. And then, hurry up and get your clap in. Hurry up, hurry up. And then God will say, you know what? You change, and they may never change. First Corinthians 14, 33, look what the Bible says. For, for God is not a God of confusion, but, but a peace. As in, in all the church, God, God is not an author of confusion. So if there's confusion in my family structure, who, who started it? If there's confusion in my home, who's the, who's the originator of confusion? If God is not the author of confusion, I heard y'all saying the devil is a lie. Come on, that's right. The devil is the one that's the author of confusion. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 40. I'm going somewhere. He said, but in all things should be done decently and in order. Come on, women of God. Now I'm shifting because this is how you can help a brother out, wives. I can help a brother out when I get in order. Y'all didn't see this coming. I'm sure, I know y'all didn't. I know you didn't see it coming. But, it's, but it's, so sometimes when, we, when we're dealing with what we want people to be, 
We put all the onus and the responsibility on those group of people, on those individuals. And yet and still we, we shook our responsibility or neglect what it is that we're supposed to be doing. But if you are a wife and you and maybe in your heart of hearts, come on, don't, don't you got to say anything. Just keep looking straight. Come on, just do that. But if you're in your heart of heart and you and you know, you know, your man, you know, your husband is not who it is that God desires for them to be. It's not your God giving anointing to remind them. <laughs> I just already told you in July we're talking about this is, this is a good setup for where we're going at in July we're talking about relationship goals in July every year I pause the, the Holy Spirit allow me we pause we talk about relationship we talk about marriage we talk about singing we talk about all of that but here I, I, want, I want to help you not just in July I want to help you today because if we're going to if, we're going, if the kingdom men are going to rise if the kingdom men are going to get in place, they, 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 can, they can do so if, you, if we'll get a little bit, if we get a little bit of help. And here, what, what am I telling you? Here, 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 it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not the fact that I can do things as, the way I desire to do them, but I got to do things according to God's will and God's plan. Look at this. Look at this. Here, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Come on, look. Here, help a brother out. Look at this. By taking the right posture. Mm. You, you can help a brother out. If you take the right posture, here it is. Look at 1 Peter 3.1. Oh, this is good. 1 Peter 3.1 says, likewise. Remember he said likewise? Anybody remember the groups? He said likewise, just like the government, just like on your job, same thing in your home. Likewise, uh-oh, wives, be. Be. It's how we want to read. Be saved is what we want to say. Read. Be sedated. Be sanctified. No, 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 no. Be subject. <laughs> Lord, he said, be subject to your own husband. Oh, yes, yeah, that's a praise broke. Isn't that a praise broke? That's a praise broke. No, y'all fight after church. Y'all fight after church. Y'all fight after church. I need to, we're going to need the altar call here in a second. So y'all fight after church. So, so, look, hey, look, so look. Sometimes, sometimes we don't have an issue being subject, am I helping anybody as I'm boring? Am I boring y'all? I'm boring y'all. Sometimes when I have an issue being subject, I just don't want to be subject to him. And sometimes in the kingdom of God, we, we miss it because here in, in the spirit of God, in the kingdom of God, listen to me closely. Come on, listen to me closely. And we're equal. We're equals, husbands and wives. We're equal in the spirit. That's what Galatians 3.28 says. It says that we're equal. We're not, where there's no male, there's no female, but we're all one in Christ. But when it comes to our home, there's an order. And when it comes to our home, there's a way that I'm supposed to carry myself. So when the kingdom men arise, and look at this, to be subject means this, to place or arrange under voluntarily. Self See, so the kingdom men are rising. If the kingdom men are going to rise the way I believe that God wants them to rise, I believe that you can help them out, sisters. When I take the right posture, when I place myself under violent, I ain't under nobody. And, 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 let, me, let, me, let me talk about me. Let me talk about me. Me and my wife have been married 17 years. Some, so, and sometimes we have tension. Sometimes uh, we, don't, we don't see eye to eye on some things. If, if we be honest, every time there's tension, every time we don't see eye to eye on th something, I, if we be honest, one, if not both of us, are not following the word of God. Come on, don't, don't let them go to sleep on me. Come on, sit up, baby. Can I tell you, here, 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 what, what am I saying? One, one, if not, both of us will get to the place that where we, we're, not, we're not following the word of God. We're not, we're not listening to the word of God. We, we decide to do what we want to do because I'm mad. She hurt my feelings. He, he was mean to me. He did. One or both are not aligning ourselves up. And so my point is, my friend, your home may be in turmoil. Your home may be, in to may be toxic. It may be toxic turbid because somebody is not arranging themselves properly. And arrange themselves. That, that's what to be subject means to place yourself arranged and under voluntarily. That's what submission is. Submission is to be able to get my place, get to a place where I'm listening to what God is saying. God has called us in this, in this family structure to be able to be in order. Just like we have heads of countries, just like we have heads of police departments, just like the judicial system, just like we got mothers and fathers, just like we got, we, we also got husbands, we got bosses. Boy, y'all are getting quiet up in here. Y'all didn't see this coming, but I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help a trying to help a brother out. Trying to help a brother out. Here, here, let me let me help you. Because here, whenever it is that God desires for us to do what it is that, that He's called us to do, 
Because some of us think that this is just kind of one thing with the Apostle Paul. Paul said this. It's just a one, one time thing. No, 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 no. Look at Colossians 3.18. Wives, submit to your husbands. Not a typo. As is fitting to, in the Lord. All right, that's just two scriptures. All right, Ephesians 5.22. Wives, submit to your own husbands. As to the Lord. And so, so what, what am I saying? This is not a, a one-time thing. This is something that God is calling for us to do to get in the right posture. And see, some of y'all can't receive me right now because I hear y'all saying, well, he, I ain't going to submit to him. You don't know what he did. You don't know what he do. You don't know who he is. I don't see anywhere where it says, why? Can you put the last verse up? This is the last, brother, last. Can you put the last verse up for me? Ephesians 5, 22. He's never given me a thumbs up before, by the way. Anytime, as long as he's been on that computer screen, he's given me a double thumbs up just now. I don't know what that's about. I don't know. He just, I asked him to put that up and he gave me a double, he gave me a double barrel, double barrel. I don't know what that was about. Okay. I didn't say, why you went back three or four scriptures? I didn't say go back three or four scriptures. I just said one scripture. I'm just kidding. You. <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say. Why did I go back? <laughs> wives, submit. Okay, that's right. Does it say, let's read it. Does it say, wives, submit to your good husband? No. Does it say, submit to your working husband? Does it say, submit to your... How are we supposed to do it? I'm out of time, but I'm, I gotta be, I'm gonna build this case. I'll pick this up next week. I'm out of time. Let me go. Let me go. Look at this. Look at this. Ephesians 5 20. The brother say, No, you're not. And the sister say, Yes, he is. He out of time. No, I'm not. Look at that. Look. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no. Get this word. Get this word. Look. Ephesians 5 21. How do I do this? How do I submit? You want to know how to submit? You want to know how to look? Ephesians 5, 21 says, submitting, here it is, it's not just one-sided. Yeah. Oh, look at Now they're talking now. Now they're talking now. I ain't heard them say nothing the whole last 40. Yes, yes. 45. I ain't heard nothing over 45 minutes. Yes. Look, look. Ephesians 5, 21 says, submitting to one another. But, but how does this happen? And come on, don't clock off me because you're single. Listen to me. Out of the reverence of I am able to submit to my husband because I'm submitted to Christ. I am to submit to my wife because I'm submitted to Christ. And see, see, this is what he's saying. And see, for so long, we have, we have allowed this to permeate. This came up during our man's conference, our men's conference. I'm so country. This came up against, in, our, in our men's conference. Man's conference. What I mean, men's. This came up. What, what about this? What about this? What about this commentary? Happy wife, happy life. But what is this all about? Happy wife, happy life. Anybody ever been told? Anybody been told a happy, happy wife, happy life? So, so if he's not making me happy, I'm not. If he's not performing, this is what we're saying. If he's not doing what I want him to do, everybody finna be mad. No, don't leave now. Come on here. Well, what am I saying? Look, if, <laughs> Peter is telling us that I am to submit. Look what he says. Look, see, because we think that it's just because. Oh, see, see if my if my husband, if I was your man, come on, if you were my one, well, some of us think if, we, if I was married this person, I was married that. No, I got a word for you too, because we think we think that if if we trade them in, we think we'll be okay. Mm, no, no, no. First Peter three one says, likewise, wives. I'm, come on, I'm gonna wrap this up. Wait, like, likewise, wives. Look at this. Be subject to your own husband. Look at this. So that even if some do not obey the word. Mm. So, so you mean tell me he'll trip? He's not obeying the word. He's not doing what he's supposed to do. When he give me something to respect, then I respect him. I'm out of time. No, no, no. The, the, the scripture says, somebody said the Bible says, the, the Bible says, I am to submit even if they're not obeying the word of God. Let me, let me remind you of something. Because some of us are so quick to criticize our spouses. Some of us are so quick to say what our spouses are not. Your spouse is a direct reflection of your intelligence. You picked them. 
You knew he was crazy. You knew he wasn't saved. You knew she was slick. But you didn't want to be mad. You saw, you saw when she went off the, at the lady at the Waffle House for not giving her no more orange. Did you see how she cussed that lady at the Waffle House? You should have knew right now. <laughs> you should have knew she was crazy right there. I know she fine. She cussed that lady out. Just over some OJ. You knew what was going on. I gotta go. I'm way. Oh, whoa. Can I, can, I, can I go a little further? Just a little further. Can I go a little further? A little further. A little further. A little further. A little further. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit. Oh no. No leave now. I'm trying to help my brother out. And they leave. And they, I'm just, this is for y'all. And they been. <laughs> Somebody like, boy, I got the pee so bad. I ain't going nowhere. He ain't even nothing to call me out like this. I got the pee. I'm not going nowhere. Look, I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> Some of us <laughs> do not submit. <laughs> Some of us don't submit. Some of us don't follow because simply we fear that they'll fail. We, we learned this from John Pipe. I've given this before, but it bears worth repeating. That we fear they're gonna fail. Why am I submit to him? He gonna, he's gonna fail. He's not gonna do it. He's not all that smart. He done never, it never works out. I listened to him before. He don't know what he's doing. What, what them wives at? They think he don't never know what he's doing. He don't know what he's doing. I told him not to do what he did. That told him not to go with it. I told him he, did. He, he don't know what he's doing. I'm not going to submit to him. God, Jesus, you ain't know what was going on, Jesus, when you made him. I fear. I fear he's not responsible enough. He's not responsible. I fear God's will. Look at this. Listen what submission is. Submission is not, let me balance it out and I'm, I'm going to close here. Submission is not agreeing with everything. That's not sub submission, not agreeing on everything. S submission does not mean leaving your brain at the altar. That's not what submission is. Submission does not mean that you will not try to influence your husband. My wife is, is, is very genius at this whenever she wants me to do something. And I, and I peeped her now because she has a way of saying, don't you want to? Don't you think it'll be a good idea too? And she don't, I don't real, I'm, I'm halfway doing what she's telling me to do. And I'm like, wait a minute. She just, she just told me what to do in her own slick way. Submission, especially, especially, oh, I'm already out here now. I'm out, especially, 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 yeah, she got, a, she, she, she know how she get a yes out of me. She know how she get a yes. Whatever you, yes, baby, yes, dear. Yes, 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 yeah. 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 Submission. All right, all right, I gotta go. Submission is not putting the will of your husband before the will of Christ. Come on, I'm trying to balance this. I'm trying to balance not just because you submit, just don't go, just don't submit without a brain and submit just doing, oh, let's let's smoke some weed or let's go to the hookah bar. Let's go do this. Let's do it. Well, I gotta submit and do what my husband says. No, 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 no. No, come on, come on back. Come on back. You, you, come on, come on back. Robbing the bank. He wants us to rob the bank. No, no, come on back, baby. Come on back, baby. No, baby. But I am to do this again, Ephesians 5:22. I'm to do this. As to the Lord. I'm going to pick up on this because I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm nowhere near trying to help a brother out. But I'll pick up on this. Because this is what, let me, let me close on this. Because, and I heard you dogging me out, but it's okay. Hey, listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to close this down. Here it is. Let me close with this quote. Play something softly for me. <laughs> That's my way of buying myself another five minutes right there. When they play something softly, it kind of resets you. And thank you. I'm, I'm getting, I'm finishing. Give me, that, give me that quote by that man of God. Give me, give me that quote because he's going to be here next week. Be the Lord's will. Submission isn't a matter of inferiority. I typed it. Come on. It's not a matter of being inferior. But rather obedience to the word of God. I'm not inferior. There it is. Submission is about me obeying the word of God. And this is what, this is what I'm saying. 
Because we, we, we're going to go further. I'm going to build on this below us, but I'll pick up on this next week. Because we're going to go right into the relationship series. This is what Pastor's trying to say. You can help your husband out. And Peter does this so masterfully. He's talking to, the, the context of this, this chapter is, he's talking to a, a two individuals who didn't know the Lord. And the wife, the woman, got saved. And now she's dealing with an unsaved spouse. Now she's dealing with someone who she's madly in love with the Lord, but her husband may not. And then the text lends to say he may, he may know Christ, but he's just not living up to the word of God. The point I'm trying to make, ladies, wives, is if you want your man to get in place, you don't got to, you don't got to keep reminding him and reminding him and nagging him and fussing and complaining. Why don't you get in the place, get in the posture, the way you're going to obey God? You're going to do what you need to do. And when you trust God to do what only he can do, God will turn your marriage around. Come on, put your hands together. Give him some praise. On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L, Jacks, one word, T-I-L, Jacks, to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jacks, download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.